The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Sunday, March 16th, 2014. Hello and welcome in to eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time, where you can interact with us with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And now with Sunday afternoon's questions and answers, here's Chris McCann. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship Sunday afternoon question and answer time during our online fellowship. And during this period of time, each person is invited to, sh- to uh, give us a call or to contact us. And one of the ways we just mentioned, we'll be happy to take your call and receive your question or comment, and I'll try to respond as much as possible by turning to the Bible, the Word of God. If you do have a question, uh, please give us a call, and or if you're listening on Pal Talk, you can enter your question into the text. We, we do have a question we'll start with from Pal Talk. Do you think it is a good thing never defined little while as far as precise duration. Don't you think this is a window for no man knows the day or the hour? Well, now, if you're referring to the little while of reference to great tribulation, um, let's see, in Revelation chapter 6, well, there, there it says little season, but I think the word um, season may also be translated as while. In Revelation six eleven, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And the little season or little while in, in John, um, in the Gospel of John, the same two words are translated little while. And they're a reference to the Great Tribulation period. And, uh, you know, God does not specifically say anywhere in the Bible, this will be um, the, the timeline for the church age. This will be the timeline for the Great Tribulation period. This will be the timeline for Judgment Day that we... We don't find those kinds of verses. And, and you will uh, find people that, that will say, if you tell them information from, from the timeline that is derived uh, through the biblical calendar of history and how God um, brought, well, the, you know, the truth is that God, he has written the Bible in this way so that we we cannot have plain direct statements and and this permits people to uh, of course to say well you cannot know no man knows the day or hour well uh thank you for your question and let's go to the first person on the phone welcome to our sunday afternoon question and answer program please go ahead with your call yes good afternoon um since christ has departed from the church years ago and now has departed from the world. You, you made a statement earlier in, in, your, in your study that man will only search the Bible to try to prove God's word to be wrong. They do not search the Bible for truth. And I think that's always been the case because the church has always uh, denied, like you say, the Old Testament but has uh, continued to teach the New Testament. But I also remember when I was in church, um, uh, how they would, maybe not the church itself, but there was a time when people would give out Bibles and they only had the Old Testament of Psalms and Proverbs, but they had the New Testament. And I always say that was never the Word of God, because how can the Word of God be, um, you know, stripped like that? There's 27 in the Old, uh, 39 in the Old, 27 in the New. And, and nowhere in the world could you have just two of the Old Testament books and, and, and the, the rest of the New Testament when God tells you to um, search His Word. Um, to find truth compared to spiritual things are spiritual. Um, I'm just wondering, 
um, since we are blessed to be under the hearing of the true gospel of the Bible Fellowship, um, and we know how the church is, and since God has departed himself from the world now and also from um, the church, could you read um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6, and I believe this may be speaking of where we are today or always have been. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 through 6 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And did did you have a question about that, or you just wanted to share those those scriptures? Those you know, scriptures, but is that the time where we are today where, where um, we are, again, fortunate to have, blessed to have uh, the Bible fellowship, which is teach, teaching the truth, and, you know, it, it's by God's grace. But the world is, is not, you know, taking heed to what God is saying. Nobody is searching the scripture. There's no fear of God now today because nobody is really um, uh, getting the truth. So I'm just wondering what we just read here. Isn't that what's happening now? Well, the, the, this has um, been happening uh, throughout the history of the world. God has used his people uh, to carry truth to uh, to others in the world and and yet the that gospel has been hid to the lost and and their minds have been blinded I mean just look back in history and we see um, a church in 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 um, the time the days of the Reformation you know four or five hundred years ago that was furious at certain men and women for wanting to share the Bible because they wanted the Bible in the language of the people and were, were distributing Scripture. The, the, church, the church thought it wise and good to arrest these people uh, to try them and and to execute them some by burning and and some um in in other ways and and how could that happen how is that possible that that the organized church could get to the point where it actually thought that was a, a good and proper thing to do well the only answer is they had their mind their minds blinded by uh, Satan, they, the, as he uh, operated in the congregations then also, and, and they became synagogues of Satan to accomplish his purposes. So the, these scriptures have application, I think, um, throughout time. Okay, but thank, thank you. you. Thank you for calling and sharing this passage. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program please go ahead with your call good morning uh, brother McCann uh, this is Don from San Diego um, on the theme of uh, blessed are they who bring uh, God's message that you were speaking on today uh, I had always thought that that spoke of blessed are them I always thought that spoke of the Father Son and Holy Spirit although I was corrected by you some time ago on that and ultimately as as we bring God's message, God is bringing the message through us. But I thank you for correcting me on that some time ago. Uh, what I, how are you today, by the way? I'm doing well, thank you. Very good. Uh, I have a statement to make, a brief story, very interesting. It happened uh, pre, uh, 
uh, May 21st, 2011. It concerns uh, the theme of uh, blessed are them that bring uh, the gospel message and also the term is spiritual judgment. Uh, before May 21st, 2011, uh, 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 a wonderful uh, couple in Sacramento, uh, John and his wife, uh, through a uh, now this was probably a few months before May 21st uh, the caravans had come in the Jonas and the uh, uh, Jerichos had come in everybody was basically waiting for uh, the rapture the end of the world as we had all jumped on board on that uh, idea and um, they had given a potluck dinner in Sacramento I was with someone who was invited there so I was privileged to attend now, there were several true believers there, and uh, uh, God willing, we were all true believers. And uh, there was a, uh, a young man there who was the leader of a caravan group, uh, not comely, not attractive. It uh, was probably the funniest oddball group of men uh, you could probably imagine. But this young man kept saying that there is going to be a spiritual judgment uh, not many people back then were focusing on the term spiritual judgment. Uh, there were only two that I knew. One was David Hoff of Family Radio. He eventually departed from Family Radio. And this young man, uh, we all had our own agendas. We all wanted to speak on God's word, what we wanted to speak on. Nobody really wanted to listen to this young man speak of spiritual judgment coming. Uh, we all said, okay, we heard you. Now sit back, enjoy your barbecue chicken. Everything's fine. Be happy. You know, we kind of brushed him off to the side. And here the other day, somebody called you from Russia, a young man. I didn't get his name, uh, but I recognized his voice. And this was confirmed by the man who called after him who said this man was the leader of a caravan, and he did introduce himself from Sacramento. So I put two and two together, and this is probably the same man who did bring the idea of spiritual judgment before May 21st, 2011. And I just wanted to point out to you, man, and also ask you if you caught his name, because he did give his name. Do you have that? Well, I, I'd rather not uh, share people's names. Okay, I, I, I sort of like the understand. idea of an anonymous call-in. Uh, of course, some people don't mind and, and would happily share their name, but, but others may well, he, feel he, he um, some name. sort of well, obligation to do him. that, and, and we, we don't want that. But I just wanted to share that story, that there were a few people out there. I mean, there may have been more, but... I was just so happy and pleased to find out that I ran across his path again because he was one of the very, very few people who was actually espousing a spiritual judgment coming, not the Hollywood type of judgment that the rest of us expected. Thank you very much, Brother McCann. Well, thank you for calling and, and sharing that. And um, I, I think that it, it just wasn't possible. It wasn't God's will for us to uh, grab a hold of that idea of his spiritual judgment prior to the date coming and going, and, and, then, and, and then we were forced to. Now, uh, yes, there could have been someone who thought that, um, and, and they were right. They, they were correct. That's what God did. But overall, um, the mindset of the people of God and since everything seemed to fit together so exactly was we we have this understood very well we know exactly how it's going to unfold and nothing was going to to um hinder uh that that um idea un, until we entered into the time and then we had to see we had to see that oh, all right that this isn't right. We have some things wrong. What is it? And and then we were forced to look again at the timeline. The timeline's correct. Uh, what could it be? And then the Bible provides the answer of a spiritual judgment. And and so uh, yes, it's possible a, um, an individual or two could have could have understood that. But thank you. 
Brother, for calling? Brother McCann, one other thing, one other thing please. Uh, blessed are the feet of them that bring the gospel, and truly the word of God is with you, Brother McCann. Thank you very much for your studies. Bye. Well, thank you for sharing and, and for your comments. And um, let's take a question now from Pal Talk. Um, the question is, when did Judgment Day begin? Did it begin on May 21, 1988? Now, that, that's a, a, um, a good question. In 1 Peter chapter 4, it says in verse 17, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. There God says judgment begins at the house of God. That's the judgment on the churches, the, the beginning of the Great Tribulation. So the final judgment, the period of the end, began on May 21, 1988. And, and Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, came as a judge upon the churches. And, and that is very helpful to us to instruct us on how, how Christ can come as a thief as, as God warned the church in Revelation 2, I think, or Revelation 3, that he would come upon them um, uh, as a thief and, and take their candlestick away. And he did that, uh, and, and the church was never aware. There was no visible indicator. There, they, they never realized judgment was upon them. So Christ came spiritually or invisibly to judge the churches and congregations and and uh, they they had no understanding of it and and still don't and that teaches us that God Christ, the Lord Jesus can also come in judgment upon the world like a thief and and uh, when when Christ came as a thief on the churches he defined for us what that means. He is such an excellent thief to steal uh, the, the blessings from all congregations and to do it right from, out, from under their nose without them even uh, ever being aware of it, that he can come as a thief upon the world in an identical way and judge the world and the world not see him nor be aware of it and and uh, so the judgment process began yes back in 1988 but may 21 2011 was the day of transition of judging the world and and when the bible speaks of the day of the lord the the day of god's wrath the day of christ um I, I would say almost always it's pointed to that day of transition of final judgment for all mankind, and that was May 21, 2011. But thank you for your question. Let's go to our next caller. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hello, Chris. Able yes, to hello, hear me? please go ahead. Again, Chris, uh, we thank God for you teaching the true meat of God's Word. No doubt many hearts are being strengthened. This new information, at least new for me, I, I just heard it, that uh, October the 7th, 2015 is not only the uh, last day of, of the Feast of Tabernacles, but also the last day of uh, the Feast of Ingathering. That, that is very uh, significant. This past Friday evening, a caller related that some Jewish people showed an interest in the proclamation that we are now in Spiritual Judgment Day. I'm not exactly sure why he then referred to Romans 11.25, where God says that blindness has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. To understand this verse, Mr. Camping would always point to the very next verse, 
which reads, And so all Israel shall be saved. I believe Israel and the Gentiles in these verses must picture God's elect so that when the last of the elect were saved, then all of Israel were saved which we know happened on May 21, 2011. We certainly hope that among that great multitude, there are many of a Jewish ancestry that will blossom and flourish. But I must say, it looks like time is running out quickly. These 1,600 days will soon be completed. Secondly, what is the status of the uh, Series 2 uh, tracks. Oh um, well, let let me just um, let me address the blindness in part has happened to Israel. Um, what I think the the caller on Friday was uh, was talking about wasn't that the the Jewish people would be saved, but but I think he referred to this verse to indicate that once God does save all the elect, that he will sort of remove the blinders from them so that they might understand some of these things. I, I think that that's the purpose. And not understand unto salvation, but have a sort of recognition of it and, and understanding in that way. Um, yes, that, that might be. And and um, as far as um, oh the, the your comment about the feast of of ingathering, um, yeah, it it really when we we see the context of Revelation fourteen, and we see that um, Babylon is fallen is stated there, and then there's so much language of of Christ. Um, with the sickle and thrusting it into harvest. And, and then the final verse, it leads right up to verse 20 in the 1600 furlongs. And, and it, that, um, it, it, it actually is a big encouragement or, or, a, or a big piece of evidence to support that, uh, the 1600 furlongs ought to be understood as 1600 days and the duration of judgment day or the duration of harvest time. Once we do realize that the 1600th day falls on the last day of tabernacles, which is also the last could be understood to be the last day of the feast of ingathering the last day of harvest and and so that means that Revelation 14 starts the, um, the judgment with, with a statement, Babylon has fallen. Babylon, the Babylon was in power for that 70 years, which typified the Great Tribulation period. Its fall identifies with the end of the Great Tribulation, May 21. Then all the language of harvest. Then we're given a number that leads us to the very last day, um, four years, four months, and 16 days later, on October 7th, to complete the harvest, to complete God's judgment. And that is a, a, a big piece of um, confirming evidence that, that we've been understanding things correctly. And your your third uh well, you had one comment and two questions. Your your second question about the track is that uh, it's right now um, it, it it's typed um, an initial uh, stage of typing. It's going to be going over, Lord willing, this coming week and and corrected, and uh, it'll be uh, filled out and and then uh, hopefully. In a couple of weeks, it'll be sent out uh, to to people who are much better with English grammar than I am, and and they'll fix it and and correct um, my grammatical errors, and and uh, we'll also continue to pray and and maybe add a little to it as and and maybe edit some out 
and hopefully uh, in a few weeks it'll be completed. The, the title of the track is in big bold letters, No More Salvation, and then in smaller letters, it it'll say, um, and of course this is this could be changed somewhat since this is is under uh, the titles a part of the track and the whole track is under review, but uh, um, in smaller letters it'll say, "God stopped saving people on May 21, 2011," and then um, the track will get into uh, God's salvation program from before the foundation of the world um, to really uh, it's there's going to be an emphasis on why God stopped saving is because he saved everyone that he intended to save and and so we will emphasize the elect and God's plan to find them and once that plan was completed then he he ends his salvation and there is no more salvation because there's no one else to be found. And uh, Lord willing, that, that should be ready in, in a few weeks. Well, thank, thank you. you. Chris. And may God continue to give you a full recovery. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you for your question and comments. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. I had a question that kind of technical about the program. I've been listening for the, ever since you started this at the end of 2011, and I noticed the last couple months there's been an issue with the volume, um, like the message on Sunday morning, like this morning's was a little bit better, but yet now the question and answer session is perfect. You know, and I listen over a cell phone. Um, when I tuned in Friday night the volume was so low that I couldn't hear. So I wondered, is there, has there been something going on with the volume setting, or is it, maybe is it just me? Well, I, I don't think it's you. Um, I'm using the same microphone right now that I use to record, and uh, we, uh, we uh, purchased some very good uh, microphones and, and things like that. And when I, uh, after I record, I normally um, play to hear how how the volume is and and how mm-hmm. how it sounds, and it it sounds fine. And so, it is not the recording. Um, I never had uh, any problems over the past, it, just these last couple of months, and I just wondered if yeah. Well, uh, Bill reset. Bill Burton, who who maintains the the players and and uh, uh, the website says it it it's not me. Um, he said someone brought it to his attention on Friday, and he's tried to correct it. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't know what the problem is. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we're thankful to the Lord for opening up and uh, uh, this kind of technology where it, it is. Uh, just amazing that people could be listening right now from anywhere in the world. And, mm-hmm. and yet um, sometimes this technology, which is basically free to us, can mm-hmm. also be uh, problematic and, and a little frustrating. I get frustrated sometimes uh, yeah. with, with Pal Talk and with Skype, and, but we're, we're limited. We're limited in... Um, the way that we can sh- uh, we can have our programs, we we don't have a great deal of funds to uh, to have like a radio station or anything like that, and and um, but but we try to uh, to perfect this as much as we can, and uh, I'm sure that Bill will be working on this. Um, to to see what the problem might be, but thank you for for uh, sharing and and bringing it to our attention. All right, I appreciate it because I really enjoy the programs, and I just I just didn't know if it was me or if there was um, some setting they had changed. But I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you. 
Well, thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, hello, this is Pasha from Sacramento. Um, I just wanted to um, say regarding the caller from San Diego, the gentleman, um, regarding last uh, Friday's uh, call in, um, I, I was involved with the caravans on the south area. But um, I, I was not running them. There's other young uh, gentlemen that were involved, and I never uh, myself thought it was going to be a spiritual judgment. Um, I thought it was going to be a, a physical judgment also. So that it was not uh, me if, if that gentleman is thinking about that situation. Um, I, I do have a question um, regarding uh, Revelation 18. Um, in uh, Revelation 18, um, starting, you know, at the beginning of the chapter, or actually I, it seems like the same idea is continuing from Revelation 17 regarding the great city, um, Babylon that's fallen, and then um, um, is that a picture of the, the church where, for example, in uh, verse 4 it says, uh, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. So I, I think that's, that's where... Um, talking about the church or in the verses uh, 10 standing afar off uh, for fear of her term and saying alas alas the great city Babylon that mighty city from in one hour is the judgment to come and and then also like in verse 16 says alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple scarlet decked with gold precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches come to naught and then also in 19 um, is, is that uh, uh, regarding the church, right? Uh, it's, and it's uh, identified with Babylon. Well, you know, that's what we thought, and and it, it, it uh, seemed to make sense that God was commanding to come out of Babylon, and how can you come out of the world? Well, the, the, uh, let, let's think about Egypt. I think it helps to to understand what God is saying here. We, we recognize that the Israelites, while in bondage in Egypt, that that was a picture of being in bondage to sin. And, and, um, and Pharaoh was a type of Satan. And then God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. And that's a picture of salvation when, when Israel came out of Egypt. It, it, it wasn't coming out of the church, that, that, that picture of um, uh, all Israel coming out of Egypt. It, it was uh, leaving the house of bondage, leaving sin and Satan behind. And so when we look at um, other passages where God commands to to uh, deliver yourself from Babylon, uh, we find that it it's in um, it it's set uh, in the context of uh, salvation. But for instance, in Zechariah two, it says uh, in verse six, "Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north," saith Jehovah. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith Jehovah. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. And um, I, I did have um, a few other verses that, that I don't know if I can find right now that uh, use this similar kind of language. Um, uh, of of delivering thyself, it it uh, is a word that points to uh, normally uh, to salvation. Um, for instance, that same word is in Daniel twelve one, uh, where where it speaks of a time of trouble such as there never was. At that time, thy people shall be delivered. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not prepared to. Uh, go to the other scriptures. I, I don't have good notes in my Bible to, uh, to go to. I think there's um, um, 
uh, at least two other places where God speaks of coming out of Babylon and delivering, and um, and it it clearly would point to salvation. And so in Revelation 18, when uh, God is saying, "Come out of her, my people." that ye be not partakers of her sins. That is, uh, to, to be saved. It's a command to be saved. And, and if we're saved, we are translated out of the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan, Babylon, and into the kingdom of God's dear Son, where we leave this world, not literally, but um, figuratively, we're exalted unto the heavenlies to be seated in Christ Jesus. We become a part of the kingdom of heaven. We have our citizenship there. We, uh, we're, we're part of that holy city. We're out of Babylon, even though we're still living here on the earth. Now, the, um, the references to one hour. Now, you're correct that one hour refers to the Great Tribulation. It's the last hour, according to that parable, the 11th to the 12th hour. And then after that 12th hour, the workday ends and the night comes. Well, I would encourage um, you and everyone to look in the uh, Greek interlinear Bible, and you'll find that um, in verse 10 of Revelation 18, where it says, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, that um, the, the word come is past tense. It, it, it ought to be translated, um, in one hour thy judgment came. Thy judgment came, and it's the same in, in the other references, too. The, that is, the hour has elapsed. The, the hour has run out. And, and now thy judgment um, in one hour is the period that Babylon was, was active and um, was reigning. And uh, now... Thy judgment has came. It, um, I, I, it may be stated that way in the interlinear. Let me take a look at Jay Green's and and see how how it reads there. In in uh, the in, this, I'm reading from the interlinear Bible. Um, J. Green's interlinear. Woe, woe to the great city of Babylon, the strong city, for in one hour your judgment came. It, it's, it's past tense. So it, it's not that um, where we read of Babylon's judgment that now the hour has come, but the hour is past, is the idea. So which meaning uh, that was... Uh typifying the churches in, in, in this, this uh, setting, correct? Well, Babylon uh, is the kingdom of Satan, and when Satan overcame the churches, the churches did become a part of Babylon, just like when King Nebuchadnezzar uh, took Judah, they became one of his provinces and, and became a part of his overall kingdom, which which can uh, included many conquered uh, nations or provinces, and mm -hmm. and and so uh, we we ought not you know we've we've placed a, a great emphasis Babylon uh, equals the church, and and we should not do that when it comes to the language where we read as we do in verse two of Revelation eighteen. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Well, that happened at the end of the 70 years, the end of Babylon's persecution and, and afflicting of Judah. At the end, when they fall, they no longer um, 
were were the ones that were um, ruling over Judah. But now it would it would be the Medes and the Persians who, who typify Christ and His kingdom, and and so um, the Babylon's fall always points to the end of the Great Tribulation, the end of the judgment, the end of the hour, when uh, when when the judgment has been completed on the church, and now God is switching to expand it and include all the world. Now are are the churches here we are in the day of judgment. Are the churches under the judgment that God has placed upon all the world? Yes, because they're unsaved individuals that populate the churches. And, and God's judgment is upon all the unsaved. And, and so that's how we can, and, uh, ought to understand the judgment of Babylon includes Muslims, um, Christian churches, uh, atheist. It includes every unsaved person in the world. Okay. Well, um, I was um, the reason I was asking is because uh, I was looking at the word alas, alas, and uh, uh, we know it's uh, the same word woe, woe. And it, um, I don't know if I'm on the right um, track here, but I've noticed um, where God or Jesus Jesus was um, t- talking to the Pharisees, so like old Israel or nation of Israel. He was using the woe singular. He said, um, like for example, in Matthew 23:13, he was saying, in, in context of the judgment, and he was condemning them basically. But he was saying, uh, "But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You shut up the kingdom of heaven against the man, and then so on." And then in that same chapter, it uses about seven or eight times or more, but it's always woe and singular, woe singular. Well, and I was looking at the uh, Revelation. 18 i thought it you know might be typified from the, the you know the church is alas alas which is doubled and it's doubled three times um, um as you've mentioned in one of your revelation studies i believe in Revelation eight and then uh, when it's tripled when it says whoa 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 um it, and in um in uh, revelation revelation um eight um and it's uh, when it's tripled it's spread across the whole world so I don't know if uh, um, we can look into this, but it seems like when um, judgment came on Israel after cro- the cross and, and when God shifted to the churches, there's a lot of singular woes uh, and, and, and um, address towards the, the Pharisees and the scribes. Uh, maybe we have the double woe towards the church, and then when, when it's uh, spread through the whole world, then we see the triple uh, woe, woe, woe in um, Revelation 8. Uh, verse 13. Just, just a, a, a thought. Well, as you mentioned, it, it, it's found three times and doubled each time. And, and so that might be three woes, and, and they're doubled because, according to that principle, um, that God has brought it to pass, that he'll bring it quickly to pass. And, and, uh, uh, it, it could be the three woes that are in view here that uh, earlier in Revelation 8 is, it is referring to, or there, there just might be um, uh, touching upon that um, to, uh, to sort of join that idea together. Uh, but thank you for sharing, and, and uh, thank you for uh, your comments in these verses. And we're going to go to our next caller now. Welcome to our question and answer program this Sunday afternoon. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing well. well thank you. Um, there's so many questions regarding callers with their questions and uh, your study of today. And uh, thank you so much. And praise God for a beautiful study and so many questions for many for many people. Um, Chris, could you please read Ezekiel 4, 16 and 17? Ezekiel chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread, so 
will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, Jehovah, have spoken it. Oh, did I say four sixteen and 17? I, I thought you did. Uh, did you yes. mean somewhere uh, else? For Ezekiel. No. Uh, can you read again 17? I'm sorry. Four oh, 17. you know, I'm sorry. I'm reading chapter 5. <laughs> oh, I'm reading chapter oh, okay. 5, 16 so and 17. All right, Ezekiel 16 and 4, 17, right. 16. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment, that they may want bread and water and be astonished or astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Um, yes, I was looking especially at you in 16 uh, to break the staff of bread. And that word in Hebrew, mate lechem, refers to a method of storage. So I, um, and this to me seems to be synonymous, I mean, seems to indicate a famine of the Word of God. And also, could we, uh, and I was thinking, can uh, we, it's a method of storage, uh, this, could this, storage of the Word of God be uh, referring to the times of the Great Tribulation and then uh, when the Word of God is stored away and it's just available for the true believers and also uh, I was thinking with today's studies on Jeremiah is to the storing of the harvest during the time of the Great Tribulation. This, that's on verse 16. On verse 17, can that be verse be tied uh, with Revelation? I could not find uh, the uh, verse uh, in Revelation because it's just uh, a core to me. But verse 17 could be tied with um, where I'm just paraphrasing where um, God says that people would wish would seek death and not find it. When we're reading Ezekiel 4.17, that they may want bread and water and not find it at the end. Oh, uh, the, um, I, I haven't looked at this Hebrew word, but, but sometimes with the Old English, um, the word want can mean lack. Um, okay. L-A-C-K. Yes. Um, um, like uh, Psalm 23, um, I shall not want means I shall not lack, um, okay. not, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do without something. And here God is um, speaking of breaking the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and that would point to the judgment on the church. And, and this is drawing from um, the warning that God gave in the book of Leviticus, in Leviticus chapter uh, 26, he says in verse 21, And if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I'll bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. And, and uh, in, in that setting, he says in verse 26, And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and shall eat and not be satisfied. Now, the lack of satisf satisfaction points to no salvation. And, and then it goes on. It, it's a, a very um, sobering chapter for anyone that is not doing the will of God, that is going contrary uh, to him. Uh, he he lays out the warnings here, and that's what Ezekiel 4 is picking up. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I will break the staff of bread means that there will be a spiritual famine, and Amos chapter 8 tells us not a famine of literal bread and water, but a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. And, and uh, God takes away his spirit from blessing his word, and there's... 
There's no um, uh, blessing upon the heart. No one's becoming born again. No salvation. And and that's uh, the constant warning of God. And, and then he finally brought it to pass on the church um, at the end of the church age in, in 1988. And, and never again did... Um, did they have bread? The, the the staff of bread was broken in the congregations. There's no bread there now. And yes, God has done the same thing with the world. Now, uh, we could say, uh, as, as God sent the gospel into the world to save a great multitude, they had bread. But but uh, there's there's no bread there now. There There's no bread anywhere as far as a person receiving it uh, unto salvation. Now there is bread. There's there's plenty of bread for those that are true believers. And and now um, as Christ commands for us to feed sheep, another way of saying that uh, is uh, when when the Lord had multitudes sit down in companies on the grass, and then He broke bread and He fed them. Uh, he uh, miraculously by multiplying the loaves, and and so to feed the elect bread is a similar statement as to uh, feed my sheep. It, it it's it's the same thing. Can can we also then say that the uh, bread, the word of God, was uh, stored? Um, the breaking of self was stored for the entire world, including the churches and the nations. During oh, oh, the oh seven I see what you're saying. You're, you're, you're thinking of uh, Joseph storing the the grain against the time and, and, of famine. Right. And yes, right. in, in that picture, uh, yes. what Joseph is a type of Christ, and the grain typifies the word of God sealed up until the time of the end. And, and it was during that famine that the granaries were open and, and Egypt had plenty of bread um, because, because uh, it was stored up on, on, in, against that point or, or for that very reason of the famine. And yes, in, in a way, that's what God did. He stored up truth in the Bible against the, the end-time famine, the end-time judgment, period. And while there was a famine in the churches, he, um, uh, he opened up the scriptures and, and God's people were, were being fed like never before outside of the churches and congregations now, uh, okay, uh, the the um, parabolic, the historical parable of Joseph storing up that famine uh, really comes to an end at the end of this the seven year famine, which would point to the great tribulation. We we don't see that carry over um, into the time after that. Well, God doesn't really get into the time after that famine. Uh, in detail in in Genesis, uh, but we do know from other places that he speaks of the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. We we also find in Luke seventeen, Luke seventeen, um, concerning the um, judgment where where. Uh, it, it's speaking of Noah and and his family entering the ark. And um, it says in verse 29, But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed all. Uh, you know, the word them is italicized. It's not in the text. Uh, it and, and so we always have the picture that it's destroying people. But, but really... It just says, and destroyed all. Then in verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So so um, this is 
using historical references as types and figures. And even thus it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, that is the end of the world, Judgment Day. And when we look at that word revealed, the, the Greek word that's translated as revealed, it has to do with revealing revelation. Uh, for instance, in 2 Thessalonians 2, where we read of the man of sin, it, it says in verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, how was the man of sin revealed? Did uh, Satan... Um, make some grand appearance and and everyone um, could see him and oh there is the man of sin revealed no he was revealed satan as the man of sin through the word of god the bible god revealed him and that's the identical idea and um it it's using um, I think the same word, or it might be a very closely related word, in Luke 17, verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. It doesn't mean he's going to uh, be seen, and everyone will fall down, and oh, this is, there he is, the world's over. It doesn't mean that. The word revealed means that he will be shown on the pages of the Bible. And, and so God here, along with Romans 2, 5, is, uh, is telling us that there will be further revelation, further revealing of truth into the day of judgment. But thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to um, thank you. the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Is there a way for those who don't have a Facebook account to access the transcripts from the Q&A sessions that you've been doing several times a week? Um, no, no, not, not right now. Um, uh, the text question and answer on Facebook uh, remains in that group, and and actually, the text is there um, since well for months. All all the quick Q and A questions and the people type type in and the responses are there, and uh, occasionally uh, I'll take or someone else might take uh, and copy and paste, and we'll post it elsewhere on Facebook, and occasionally I might post it in the Time and Judgment group, a specific question and answer, but um, no, uh, maybe there's something we can do about that, but right now I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, what it could be. Okay, thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Thank you for your question, and let's um, take another question from Pal Talk. Please read... Leviticus 23:39 Does God allow those two Sabbath days to be any day of the week or must they always land on the seventh Saturday seventh day Saturday day of the week In Leviticus 23 um, verse 39 says also in the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto Jehovah seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. That's, that's an interesting question. Uh, the um, 15th day of the Hebrew month would not always be the, the same day of the week. And, and this feast is commanded to be held... Uh, specifically on the 15th day. It's like, it's like one of our calendar days. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, let's see, what, what holiday do we have? Uh, well, Christmas 
um, Christmas falls on Wednesday and the next year it's Thursday and the following year it's Friday. And, and so you, you, you can't determine that because Christmas is on a set date of the 25th of December. Now, um, now uh, with something like Easter, uh, the Easter holiday moves, it, it, it rotates uh, because uh, it, it does not have a set established date. So Easter can always be on a Sunday. Now, the, the, the Israelites would, would have the same situation. They have the feast must be on the 15th day of the Hebrew seventh month. And so that, um, that does make uh, this statement very interesting, that the first day shall be a Sabbath and the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And this more than likely would, would indicate that these are special Sabbaths, that, that God is making them holy days, um, uh, just as we, we read of the Lord Jesus when, uh, when he went to the cross, that, that uh, remember it says that was a high holy day, and, and uh, I, I think the point of that was that uh, the uh, Passover that year happened to fall uh, on Sabbath. The, the, it was coming, approaching Sabbath. And so it made it a high holy day, the, the special significance. And, and yet um, the, the Passover also would be on the 14th day of the first month and, and could have been other days of the week. But, but thank you for that interesting question. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Um, I'd like to ask a question and then a follow-up question to it. Um, what you were speaking about today, about the Feast of Ingathering, um, is what the elect or claim to be elect bring to that feast? Is that the fruits of this specific time of testing? Well, no, I don't think so. Um, I, I, I think it is the fruit that is um, uh, ourself, uh, if we're truly saved. We, we are the fruit uh, that God has been waiting for that is to uh, be gathered in. And, and God has saved everyone. He has his fruit. And, and, and so when he says uh, we're not to appear before him empty, that uh, someone uh, would appear before him empty if they were not saved. And, and so um, to appear before him uh, having a legitimate offering would be that, that um, the individual has truly become saved. They are the fruit themselves. But thank okay, you. Um, yes. And, and it's kind of um, have a little bit of difficulty understanding why, if that's the case, we are particularly um, in the 1600 days and it being 40 times 40, specifically kind of speaking towards it being a time of testing and it, you also explained this in earlier studies about uh, in Second Peter about the refiner's fire. Um, why is it that if we're kind of already in a state of being saved or not, and again, we can't really know, so, and since we're here, we'll be tested, and that will um, go to show and kind of be a judgment to the unelect or the unsaved. Um, in that regard, since we are the fruits um, and it was determined um, on May 21st. Um, do you know why we are being tested? If it's not to bring, uh, if it's not to be the fruit of well, the, well, the gathering? the uh, purifying or the going through the fire will bring glory to God, and uh, you know, we, uh, I mean, this this is uh, actually uh, uh, age old question. Why, um, after uh, uh, saving 
in, or why does God save one person as a child uh, or uh, one person and 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 their life is um, so different they 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 might die quickly and go to heaven and another person spends their whole life laboring in the gospel and struggling well we we don't know all the answers for that but but we can know that that god god's purpose for this period of time is glory it is to get him glory to be glorified in the judgment of the unsaved to be glorified in the endurance through his people um it it it, it it's um uh, as they go through the spiritual fire of this day and another purpose um i think we can see in hebrews chapter 3 in hebrews 3 we have the um historical example of israel coming out of egypt after a great deliverance and and there israel multiplied and and there finally god delivered them and brought them forth out of the gates of of egypt and um and uh, through just a spectacular deliverance and what happened did they immediately enter into the promised land no god had them wander in the wilderness for 40 years a time of testing why did he do that after so long they were in cruel hard bondage crying out to him oh oh uh jehovah uh where is your promise that you promised to abraham to uh to bring us out after being afflicted 400 years and 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 then god finally hears and the stage is set for just a wonderful magnificent um entry into the promised land of canaan where everyone now is happy everyone is blessed and it it's all beautiful and yet god had them come out of egypt in a in that mighty dramatic way and then he led them around the wilderness for 40 years under a hot sun in a dry desert until um, something happened. Now, in Hebrews 3, he tells us one of the reasons why he did that. It says in verse 16, For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And what this tells us, as we can carry this over to May 21, as God multiplied his elect, he saved a great multitude, and May 21 was a great day of deliverance of all these elect. And then, well, everybody went into heaven, which would be like the Jews coming out of Egypt and going into the promised land. No, no, it didn't happen. Uh, th there was disappointment, confusion, and it was like, very much like a hot sun uh, beating down upon uh, all the, those that trusted in these things. And, and then we learn that there's a good possibility we'll be here 1,600 days, which is 40 times 40. And God's indicating a testing program from the date of deliverance until you enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because there were many, many that clung with flatteries, many that were not true believers, many that were not truly born again, but they joined up. They they liked the idea of coming out of the church because they're they're very independent-minded. You know, 
a proud person can be very independent and and they don't want anybody to tell them what to do they they don't want a pastor or elder to instruct them they and 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 so a good number of people that came out of the churches were never saved they joined up with the idea of May 21 2011 being judgment day and when it didn't happen well then it's like the hot sun began to beat down upon them and god is taking us through a little sojourning period in order that not one of them, not one of them enter into his rest. But his people, the Bible says, the the true believers will endure to the end. So the, the true believer might struggle. Um, it, it may be very hard and a difficult period, yet they will make it through like Joshua and Caleb and Mo or, or now well Moses is a different story but but like the true believers and all those under age 20 typified true believers uh, and 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 they entered into the promised land of Canaan and uh, so again one reason why we're here is so God can try us and test us and as he does so, there will be people, as there has been, that will fall away. They're, oh, this is too much. This is enough for me. I've had it. No more timeline. No, I don't believe any of it. I'm going back to church. Um, I'm just going to uh, continue on with my own um my own understanding of the Bible. I'm not going to listen to anybody else and so forth. And, and yet they, they're denying and turning from the uh, wonderful truths that God has uh, uh, kindly and graciously opened up to us during the time of uh, the end of the Great Tribulation and into this Day of Judgment. But thank you for your question. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, I hope you get better. I hope the Lord uh, encourages you to stay uh, joyful in Christ and uh, his word as it sounds uh, he has been doing with you. Uh, very good questions and stuff here today. Uh I'm still out on some of this. I uh, really do believe we're at the Judgment Day uh, that I be that began in '88, as it began to fall on the church. Can I just summarize, without, uh, if you would please, uh, any interruption, so I can get this out? I hope to be an edification here to some degree. I well, believe pretty well, much. Well, I'm sorry, I can't saying, promise that, but go ahead. Yeah, because if I don't get it out, then I don't get the the conclusion. And you can go back, and if you would, I, I'm sure you'll critique it, but I'll try not to be. I know you can critique it. So if it, it just uh, on the, the, the thing is, I believe what you're, you're saying is true. I, I really enjoy what's, what's going on here because people are really interested. The thing on Revelation 9, uh, just real quick, was that the false believers were hurt but never killed, and they were tormented. I believe that started in 88. But the third part, I believe, where I know you don't believe this, but I'm just saying the third part, I believe, were the true believers, because when they kill you, they think they do God a service. And uh, and so that's the reason why... Uh, well, hold, re- hold on uh, a second. Um, let me ask you a question. I, let yeah, let yeah, me yeah, ask but, you a question. Chris, 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 you you Chris, say I, the, the, so, the third I, part... Uh, Chris, I just... Please, please, please. I, I, I understand. You can... If you would, please, sir. Uh, I, I really appreciate your study. It's just been excellent today. I just uh, everything is uh, coming together. Everybody's kind of been wondering that it's fine tuning. Uh, the point that I was trying to make is if you go to chapter ten, then when it says in verse seven, oh, when you begin to hear the voice, it shall begin to sound. The mystery shall be finished. Well, I believe the sun and the moon were darkened in eighty-eight. It would began. It began, and that's why in verse eleven it says you must prophesy. I believe that was the latter rain started in ninety-four. And then it just goes on, and the judgment, yes, has always been, uh, you know, two-edged sword, the gospel, 94 on. And then the, then the judgment just goes on uh, with the gospel going out the latter rain from 94 on up to 2015. I believe that's probably for sure 
the end of the world. I have everything tied in, but that's all I was going to say. All this other stuff you're talking about, Joseph, and it just sounds great. And uh, I, I, I understand it could be that. And I'm just saying that that's where some of these people that I've been listening to, they, they just think that the Revelation 9 and 10 thing is just a little screwy. But the rest of what you have, I believe, is probably true. Anyway, Chris, that's it. All Thank right. you. All right, well, well uh, appreciate your call. Uh, I'm I'm afraid that you're you're throwing things off kilter by 23 years, and and that is um, important, and and of course it matters um, how we understand Revelation 9 and 10, and I'm sure that an improper understanding of those chapters will lead to improper understandings of other things, and um, uh, well I. Uh, I, I believe you've been following the study, and so I, I don't think there's much more I can tell you. Uh, I've spent uh, many hours going through the verses, laying it out, and I would just um, encourage you or anyone to to uh, listen to the studies and and carefully go over them. And uh, it, it takes God to open our eyes to understandings of His Word and and he does that according to his timetable. But thank you for calling and sharing. You, and let's go to our last call today. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Could you read uh, Matthew thirteen thirty, please? Matthew 13. Um, let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Could um, Where it's, where it's uh, referring to where the, the, um, the tares are gathered first, can mm-hmm. we kind of tie that into Revelation 9 where the third part is killed? That, yes, that ha- that occurs first. Yes, that okay. that's why it says um, it says that, and and notice it's the tares, the tares that have been growing with the wheat, just as in Revelation nine, it's the third part, and then we read of the rest of the men not killed by those plagues. So right. God here is looking at specifically those in the church, and we know uh, here. The tares are. Th- this is a, a good verse that um, hopefully our previous caller will listen and, and check this out because you could not gather the tares prior to uh, the period where they were to, to grow together, and and then um, you could you could start to gather the tares and. And the process got underway, and we know that had to do with the end of the church age. And then finally, um, when when Judgment Day came, it was completed because uh, you didn't know who were tares until that point. At any point, someone could have um, left the church and gone out into the world. In other words, uh, to put it, put it another way how could the tares be bundled uh, during the the period of the great tribulation while they still could come out you you couldn't conclusively say well this individual is a tear or that individual you if, if anyone would make that kind of conclusion oh that person's in church and here it is a couple years still left to go and 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 to say that person's in church, they're a tear, you would be wrong because that person um, ends up coming out in a year. and And so the only way to bundle them in in an absolute way for burning is at the end of the great tribulation, at the end of of God's <coughs> timetable in which he was saving individuals. And then, uh, now it's conclusive. Now, these are the tares 
bundled for burning and you burn them the first day of judgment. And, and that's why the third part are killed at that point. And, and uh, thank you. That, that's a very good verse um, to explain what Revelation 9 is teaching. Well, I would like to thank everyone for sharing your questions and comments, and especially for the Bible verses we had an opportunity to read and consider. We have come to the end of our time today. So um, at this point, I'll just say good afternoon. Uh, please continue with us as we continue to uh, read Scripture and also uh, to sing hymns. And thanks for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time with your speaker, Chris McCann. You can join us for these Questions and Answers sessions Sunday afternoon following Sunday studies and Monday and Friday evenings following the Monday and Friday evening studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.